Uh, our next uh, speaker is uh, Dr. Tanya Cernucci, and she'll be talking about the Gavi Initiative. Good afternoon. Um, what I've been asked to do today is to present uh, the Gavi HPV program. And uh, what I'd like to talk about is really the rationale for Gavi's engagement in HPV, give you the main features of, uh, of our program um, for supporting vac vaccination in, in Gavi eligible countries, um, give a very quick overview of the demand forecast, um, and then also talk about some interesting uh, descriptive statistics that are coming in from uh, the first round of applications. Uh, that was just concluded, and um, then uh, go over some of the challenges and opportunities that we have identified. Before I do so, um, I'd like to um, to provide a quick overview of, of Gavi's work, as I'm not entirely familiar on um, the audience knowledge of our work. Gavi is a public-private partnership. Um, that was created with the mission to save children's life and protect people's health by increasing access to immunization. Uh, we have uh, the goal to accelerate um, uptake and use of underused and new vaccines, uh, strengthening health systems uh, to deliver immunization, um, increase predictability of global financing and improve sustainability of national financing for immunization, as well as shaping vaccine markets to ensure that we get quality vaccines in the right quantities and uh, low prices. So far, we have committed $7.8 billion uh, to our eligible countries. Uh, the great majority, more than 80%, goes to vaccine supply. Um, among the, uh, the results already reached, uh, we see a, an, an incredible increase in a country demand for uh, supported vaccines. We had a record of uh, vaccine applications approved in 2011. And uh, jointly with our partners, of course, we are increasing immunization coverage uh, in supported countries uh, that went from about 61% to about 74% from 2000 2011. And um, among other results, um, uh, really is the fact that Gavi eligible countries are now firmly established as an acceptable low income pricing tier. Uh, we can see here uh, the difference between the price we are paying for the vaccines we are procuring and the U.S. public market. Another point of comparison that may be interesting if you look at the case of HPV and, and the uh, slides that were just presented by our PAO colleague, um, the price that was offered uh, in 2011 to Gavi uh, for HPV was $5 versus a price of 13.14 uh, for the PAO countries. Moving on to our engagement uh, in HPV, uh, there are some uh, interesting uh, statistics that are presented in the ICO report that you should have available to you um, uh, that show that 48% of new cervical cancer cases diagnosed annually worldwide are from GAVI eligible countries. Um, the highest incidence rates are in Eastern and Western Africa, and the great majority of countries here are from uh, GAVI eligible. Um, and similarly, for mortality, we have 54% of cervical cancer deaths um, occurring annually worldwide that are from GAVI eligible countries. And the current partners of uh, cervical cancer incidence worldwide reflect, of course, the uh, underlying risk of disease, but also the availability of um, a prevention by effective screening and vaccination. If we look at vaccination uh, from this map, we can see that uh, the uh, national introduction of HPV program is really uh, taking place in countries that are much richer uh, than the GAVI eligible <coughs> countries. And uh, apart for a couple of exceptions, Lesotho and Rwanda, none of the GAVI eligible countries has introduced nationally. Um, similarly, if we look at uh, screening services, while there is a wide variation in the level of cervical cancer screening coverage in GAVI countries, um, in the great majority of the countries, uh, women had never had a pelvic exam. Uh, it's interesting from, from this graph here, again from uh, ICO um, uh, statistics, uh, to see Ethiopia and Bangladesh, which are among the most populous countries in GAVI. Uh, we can see that more than 90% of women uh, report not, uh, never having had a, a pelvic exam. Um, and the, of course, this was uh, presented already in the, in the panel before this session. Um, uh, the ratio of mortality to incidence of cervical cancer uh, in GAVI eligible countries because of the lack of treatment is uh, much higher than in the rest of the world, as we can see again from ICO um, analysis. Now, um, all of these, as well as uh, other considerations around affordability, cost effectiveness, and vaccine readiness, uh, 
which is somewhat a summary of the availability of a vaccine as well as of uh, an identified uh, strategy for uh, implementing vaccination um, uh, considered feasible, went into um, a board decision, a Gavi board decision in 2008 to endorse a portfolio of vaccines that included HPV together with JE, rubella, and typhoid vaccines. There were two um, uh, caveats uh, to this board decision. One was for Gavi to negotiate a price uh, that was accepted acceptable and uh, what acceptable meant really was to have a price that was below the five dollars price per dose that was offered uh, in 2011. Um, the second uh, condition was that uh, countries uh, had to demonstrate their ability to deliver um, um, vaccination to adolescent girls before they could uh, introduce the vaccine nationally with Gavi support. So essentially what we did was, for the first time, um, as this is not the way we normally work, we created two uh, pathways for introduction of um, HPV vaccines with Gavi support. The first pathway is only for countries that have proven their ability to vaccinate adolescent girls and they can receive support for a national introduction. The second pathway is for countries that don't have that ability or they can't demonstrate that ability and they would have to go through a demonstration program. And I'll explain both programs uh, in detail in a second. Um, what is interesting to see is that there is a good chunk of countries uh, that don't have uh, past experience with HPV vaccines in the GAVI eligible group. Uh, some of them, the dark blue here, uh, do have some experience and uh, not all would qualify to go straight to national introduction as uh, there is a, a variation of, of, of quality, if, if we want to say it this way, uh, between the programs that were supported in the various countries. Um, uh, programs were supported, as you know, from Merck, PATH, ACC and other organizations. Um, now, uh, giving, I would like to give you uh, the details of, of the uh, programs we support. For the national introduction, um, countries that are eligible are countries that have a GNI per capita below $1,520 US dollars. They have to demonstrate uh, um, to have at least 70% DTP3 coverage. This is a proxy for a strong immunization system that we use for other vaccines as well. The famous uh, requirement uh, for demonstrated ability, we're asking that countries show to have completed a series of vaccines to at least 50% of target vaccination cohort in an average size district. So if they can prove this, and this doesn't need necessarily to be HPV vaccination, although it's likely to be HPV vaccination, then they can go straight to national introduction. Um, we have put a lot of emphasis on uh, country analysis of costing, uh, given the high operational cost of HPV vaccination compared to uh, other vaccination programs we support. So countries need to know what, the, what kind of cost they're incurring. They need to be aware of, uh, be able to afford those costs and have identified other sources of funding in addition to Gavi. Uh, reason being that we do not support operational costs. We only give a, a vaccine introduction grant, which covers the startup cost vaccination for the first year and for the rest we only fund um, the supply. Um, we also asking that countries consider this as part of a comprehensive approach to controlling cervical cancer, knowing that we do not have, um, that, that the HPV vaccination is, is, is not the only strategy that needs to, to be undertaken, um, as identified by previous speakers as well. Um, we ask countries to identify a single year of age or a single school grade cohort within the target population of 9 to 13 years old that was recommended by WHO. And they have to identify a primary delivery strategy, knowing that if they do identify identify schools as a primary delivery strategy, they need to have a strategy for out-of-school girls, of course. And if they do identify schools as the primary delivery strategy, then we ask that 75% of um, the girls uh, targeted are in schools. Um, and so we ask countries to uh, submit uh, data on uh, school enrollment. Now, that was for the national program. For the HPV demonstration program, so this is for countries that don't have the demonstrated ability to reach at least 50% of the girls with a multi-dose uh, course vaccine. Um, here again, uh, the GNI per capita and the 70% DTP3 coverage requirements apply. Um, the objectives of this program is really for the countries to learn um, on the, uh, learn, um, 
the um, how to do vaccination of, of girls, um, therefore understand whether they're able to reach coverage, whether the vaccine is acceptable, whether they have a feasible strategy, and what are the costs of delivery. And at the same time, integrate, uh, we ask that they integrate um, adolescent uh, health, uh, other adolescent health interventions with the HPV vaccination, and that again, they frame this, this HPV vaccination as part of a more comprehensive uh, cancer prevention strategy. It's a two years program, so we found essentially two rounds of, of vaccination. Uh, the maximum size of, of, of the uh, demonstration project in each country is 15,000 girls, apart for very large countries where the, the size goes up to 20,000. Uh, again, the main activities are two rounds of vaccination with uh, an evaluation after the first round to understand uh, um, the coverage, acceptability, feasibility, and cost. After the first round, if the countries are successful, we encourage them to apply for national support to Gavi so that there is no interruption between the demonstration program and the national program. Uh, we encourage countries to assess first through a desk-based review and then um, through implementation the feasibility of integrating other adolescent services with HPV vaccination and to develop a comprehensive cervical cancer prevention and control strategy. To do so, we are aware that countries need to have multi-stakeholders group in countries that include immunization but also cancer education, reproductive health groups, and we ask that they do set up these groups if they don't have one. There are no co-financing requirements for the uh, demonstration program while there is a co-financing requirement for the national uh, program and we provide a program grant that covers about 80 percent of the costs uh, for a vaccination um, so this is um uh, these slides uh, shows our forecast uh, of introductions. We have had the first round of applications. We received uh, two applications for national support, 15 for the demonstration project. We forecast up to 42 uh, demonstration projects to be undertaken by 2020, up to 45 by 2020, uh, to, uh, 45 national introduction by 2020, and uh, the peak, uh, the demand will reach about 40 million uh, doses in 2020, uh, and we. Uh, we forecast we will uh, vaccinate 35 million girls. Now, some interesting data that came in um, of, with the first round of applications. Uh, most of the countries seem to be willing to use uh, school-based strategies, mainly grade-based, um, and for the out-of-school girls, they will use uh, mainly outreach or uh, health facility and outreach strat strategies. Um, the most targeted group is 10 years old. Uh, some countries are targeting nine, some 11, um, and uh, primary four and five are the most targeted grades. Um, I'm not gonna go much into the challenges as I'm running out of time, and I think those were presented by the previous panel. Um, there are many challenges that are very similar to other vaccines, and there are new challenges that have to do with the new target population, adolescents, untested delivery platforms. They need to have a school strategy if schools are chosen, but also out of school probably higher delivery costs, um, issues uh, around communication and social mobilization for a sexually transmitted virus um, that is really targeting a silent killer that doesn't show many signs of disease, and the need of collaboration among uh, virus stakeholders. Uh, just one point on, on, on this last challenge, we actually see it really as an opportunity in Gavi, um, and this would be an opportunity to, for us to expand our partnership for a successful um, immunization uh, to adolescent groups, uh, cancer groups, health uh, education groups, uh, which are beyond our uh, current uh, um, more traditional partners. And we've seen in the first round of applications that countries are really willing to look into the ability to integrate HPV vaccination with other, with other services. And some of the services that have been mentioned uh, for integration in the applications are sexual reproductive health, hygiene, menstrual hygiene, dewarming, water and sanitation, other vaccination programs, HIV counseling, and gender-based violence, as well as early marriage. So uh, it's very interesting to see that there is appetite for this, although cl clearly it's, it's going to be difficult. Um, just want to acknowledge the various partners that have worked with us, uh, um, mainly WHO and PATH for this program. We've also worked with the UNICEF IARC and the World Bank, and um, there's plenty of other partners that are uh, here up on this slide that we are, we've worked with during the design phase and that have volunteered to um, help us out in the implementation phase. So we very much look forward to working with all of you in implementation of the program. Thank you.